Good morning, folks. As you watch a plasma filament get airborne here on the northeastern limb, we begin a day of mostly Earth-focused science. That will range across time and topic, but let's start here with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours very smooth in the rotation. The coronal holes really remain confined to the polar regions at this time. The bright active areas bottom right and top left are departing and decaying, respectively. One will soon be gone from view, and that pretty plasma dance in red we showed at the start was the decay maker on the north. And so we go to the solar wind, where a minor intensification this morning has merely brought geospace telemetry of the stream up to the higher end of normal. We've been in the lower range, and so even this rise in intensity is but a breeze to the magnetosphere. Let's go to the atmosphere and check out the polar vortex. We are indeed seeing the initial signs of the seasonal breakdown of the vortex in the north. Those who did their homework with the weather learning playlist yesterday may remember the semi-annual oscillation. And indeed, we are already seeing the formation of the vortex in the south as their days grow ever shorter. Up next, a story of interest. Some of the most extreme, extremophile life we've found sits on the ocean floor thermal vents. The Russians found microbes deep beneath the Antarctic ice, and they've even found tardigrades living on the outside of the International Space Station. And now we add another to the list. At the most exposed deep layer of the crust, in nutrient-deficient hairline cracks of the crust, they had figured out that its life cycle must be very, very slow, but are otherwise unable to explain their existence. Up next, first there were many, and then there were four, and soon there will be just two. Of course, we're discussing the mission selection process, and they need to cut this list in half by next year in order to make a 2025 launch window for some of them. You can read it all at the link below, but observers should strongly favor the first two over the last two. Nearby star flare monitoring and galactic gamma ray sweeps beat out gravitational waves and stellar merger events every time. Folks, they had high hopes for the dark matter search at Gleam. Careful observers will remember this no-show is the third one looking at the dwarf galaxies of the Milky Way in just the last few months. But then there are the dark matter searches the entire world of physics waits for. They have hundreds of the world's top scientists carefully analyzing every inch of the experiment and data and potential interpretations. The Ice Cube and Antares missions teamed up to form a supergroup, one containing researchers from nearly every top university in Europe, a number of others across the remainder of the world, and over a dozen U.S. institutions including MIT, Berkeley, both Cal and the National Lawrence Livermore Lab, Yale University as well, and of course, Oxford, the perennial global top five university out of the UK. All in all, that is a lot of funding and time and brain power and effort to come out and say you found absolutely nothing, just as long as they know they tried and were proud of them. Geez, let's get away from this sickness and science to some groundbreakers in San Diego. Their simulations are suggesting that the early mantle may have played a role in the creation of the planet's first magnetic field. This is, of course, counter to the common idea that the core is what generates Earth's field, and it is a key distinction. While not the end of the story by any means, every jot and tittle taking us further from the modern dynamo, which ignores a lot of solid science for the sake of simplification and modeling, is a good thing in my book. Lastly, folks, the archaeology world is going a bit nuts this week over the latest findings in Iran. Your eyes deceive you not, veteran observers, and in this work describing what the scientists ended up determining was a mantis-like insect drawing, they do mention Dr. Peratt's work showing these to be plasma discharges that occurred in the last great solar disaster. For those who don't recall the Plasma Formations episode of the 2019 Catastrophe Playlist, Dr. Peratt showed how a number of ancient works, evidences, drawings, etc., deviated from their high-detail skill at the time and became less clear, ghostly forms that lacked intimate detail. It's like Rembrandt all of a sudden started doodling stick figures on napkins. What on earth happened to cause this shift? That full playlist, linked below this video and free to watch, fully details the stories of the ancients both the ones they left behind on purpose and the other ones. Website members, your latest Deeper Look episode is important. It may be less than two minutes, but it will last us for years to come. And if none of the members has a good idea or explanation for what we're seeing, we may have to call this one out in public because it would be the biggest space weather story since the 2017 solar flares. I am also happy to announce the down charts on the app are back and using the GOES-16 data feeds. We appreciate your patience while they mess with the sources of our data. 
And folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our start to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.